evening everybody this is uh, Drew and Casey we're coming to you the day before Memorial Day I know that we're coming out of quarantine so the three-day weekend feels a little weird but uh, tomorrow is a big day and there's a reason we're celebrating it so I would love to share this Memorial Day interview of Art a 101 year old World War II veteran so here he is I'll tell you the truth, every day that I've lived in Bend, Oregon, each day has been better. And I've adopted as my motto, uh, the best is yet to come. Tomorrow will be better. Where are you from, Art? Born and raised in Iowa, in grade school every day, uh, first thing in the morning, saluted the flag and said the Pledge of Allegiance, graduated University of Iowa. Went to work in Chicago as a CPA, but <laughs> having been brought up on the farm and living outdoors all my life, uh, I soon found out that being an accountant wasn't for me. So I took a streetcar one day and went out to the Midway Airport in Chicago and I saw a big airplane out there. I saw this big TWA Constellation, brand new at that time. I went inside to the ticket office and I asked the guy, I said, where can I apply for a job? So I walked about a half a mile down to the main office and within a half hour I was hired. <laughs> December 1941, uh, I'm working the night shift and on the radio comes over, uh, we're at war. We interrupt this broadcast and bring you this important bulletin from the United Press. Flash, Washington. The White House announces Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. I guess it was the next day you know, on the teletype, the main office in Kansas City, they asked for volunteers for people to serve overseas, that they had signed a contract with the Army Air Corps that to carry passengers and cargo to the front. I was their first volunteer. The first? Yes. That's amazing. Shortly thereafter, I was on my way to Marrakesh, Morocco to establish a base there. The plane that we flew to Africa in was a DC-4. I yeah. was sent to Marrakesh to establish the base, to make arrangements for the planes to land there on their airport. While I was overseas as a civilian, I was doing work that was essential to the war effort. I was apparently 25. I was new out of school and I'd only had a couple of years experience with TWA. So let me tell you, a boy from Iowa who was told to get on an airplane and establish a base in Morocco, it took my breath away. I want to tell you a story about when I was in Marrakesh. Yes. As you may remember, uh, Roosevelt met with Churchill and Stalin in Casablanca. And after the conference was over, he was driven the 80 miles down to Marrakesh from Casablanca to get on one of our airplanes. Oh, I just happened to be there and I was working at the time. It's getting dark and I'm just about to dispatch the airplane. When I walked around underneath the wing of the plane, and I bumped into a guy, and he had on a long reddish brown overcoat. It was George C. Marshall. Oh, wow. He was head of the entire war. Yeah. And five star general. I said, Excuse me, and got back to my job. <laughs> uh, what do you know about Marrakesh? The most exotic place in the world, believe me, at that time. After I was there in Marrakesh for about six months, the fighting had, had left Africa. I was transferred to Prestwick, Scotland, still in the same type of position. And during that time, my draft board in Iowa was apparently scraping the barrel, you know, late in the war. Yeah. And they were running out of people. So damn if they didn't draft me from Scotland and bring me back to draft me. So that's how I ended up in the service. Uh, when I went in the Navy, I went in as a seaman third, <laughs> and uh, one day they said, would you like to go to officer's training school? And I said, get me out of here, yeah, because <laughs> I wasn't doing anything. That was an eight-week uh, period, 
And a week before it was over, uh, Japan said that they quit. Okay. So we were sent to Sampson, New York, and got our discharge and placed on inactive duty for 10 years. So I served 10 years on inactive duty. As a commission, did you commission or did? Yeah, as commission. As a commission yeah, officer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But actually, I am still a swab. <laughs> Where is that? Where is it? Mm -hmm. It's on the northwest coast of Italy. Italy. Everybody that goes there, they go up to a particular spot to take this shot right here, that shot. So you've been there? We've been there twice, yeah. We were there this last year. And uh, the first time you went there, why did you go there? Because I just finished painting this. <laughs> <laughs> he started the painting while he was doing uh, his oncology for lung cancer for um, chemotherapy and radiation and he got it from a picture and then as soon as he had finished that and his oncologist released him we went to Italy and eight days after he was done we were in that village so and he had never been there yeah. when he did the painting I've done the best I can to keep my mental facilities and I, I do a lot of reading uh, I'm interested in what's going on in the world. I do my best to keep up with uh, current events. Uh, I do word puzzles. <laughs> Talk about Pilot Butte. What do you do at Pilot Butte? I used to go up there every day, you know, and uh, join this sensory club to keep track of it. But uh, I only go couple times a week now. How many times have you climbed up to the top? Climbed up there 12, uh, yeah, 1,200, 1200 times, times in 10 years. How many miles is that? Uh, 2,400 miles. 2400. And the elevation is 500 feet, so I'm getting pretty good exercise. I didn't tell you either, I did learn to fly. Oh yes, I did see. Civilian pilot training program. Yes, yes. Yeah. So you have your pilot's license? I have a pilot's license. Oh, okay. Because when you talk about flying, you know about flying. Because I, I know can about tell. Flying. I know when I talk to a pilot. So I was like, he's a pilot. So I was very confused. So that brings up a story of my last birthday. I'm 101 now. And uh, my daughter gave me a trip on, guess what? A glider. I've always wanted to fly on a glider. The pilot and I have towed us up to 5,000 feet. And I had told him ahead of time I had a pilot's license. And uh, so I got up there, he says, okay, you want to fly it? And I did, I flew it all the way back down. <laughs> what a thrill. He's been carving all of his life. And then he carved one year a hand for me. He said, I will always be there to give you a hand. And that's actually his hand. I carved this one four years ago. But no, theoretically, no two links are the same. And many of these links move. My term in this service, while well, it had some low points, uh, I'm very happy that I did serve. I will fly that flag out there 365 days of the year. I'm very proud that I have uh, been here. I, I think that some of that comes from having served. Each year that I've lived here, especially the last eight years, each year is better than the year before. As an example, we have been to, to Europe four times in the last six years, That's each awesome. time for one month. And how good is that, you know? All my life I dreamt about living on the left bank in Paris. Well. We did that. <laughs> I've been reading a book here by Deepak Chopra. He's a doctor, but he's also a philosopher and an author. And he says, if you've got a positive attitude and you think tomorrow will be better, it probably will be. You think you're going to die, you probably will. You know? <laughs> so that kind of makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? a little bit to remember some of our friends who have passed away on active duty and share a little bit about them so we can memorialize them. Um, 
First, I'm going to start with John Graziano. He was a pilot that was an instructor when I was a student. He was a fighter pilot instructor, so I never got to fly with him. I was a heavy guy, but he was just a rock star. Um, not only that, he was just humble, and he was an awesome example about what an officer was, both to Casey and I. Uh, when I was enlisted, I had a couple friends pass away. Um, Ryan Hammond was a loadmaster on Torque 62. I knew him when he was avionics back shop, and when I had a dream of becoming an officer, he had a dream of getting out of that back shop. So um, he was always just kind of that that guide for me to get out and do something with my life. Um, then I have two friends that have uh, passed away from cancer, Seth Stambaugh recently, and Brent Burklow. Um, I flew with Brent, and Seth was um, in contracting with me. And last was Brad Nicholson, who passed away about two years ago from suicide. Um, as we finish with Brad, I just want to say that uh, every day we do the Vet 22 push-up challenge. There is a veteran that does commit suicide, so I think it's just important. I'll put the link below to reach out, but in this time of need, if you want somebody to talk to, please send a link message. Let us know.